Good evening. Welcome to Knox Church on this Christmas Eve. This is one of those uh, odd years where we have the fourth Sunday of Advent and the uh, Christmas Eve all coming together in the same, uh, on the same day. And so uh, we are going to, in a second, proceed with uh, the lighting of the Christ candle. Um, but I want to welcome you here and just uh, say we're glad that you have arrived. I'm, I'm um, the interim moderator of this church. If, if you're not a Presbyterian, you probably don't know what that means, but it's just uh, currently Knox does not have a, a uh, full-time senior pastor, and I'm sort of responsible for oversight of the congregation. And uh, this is already the third service of the day, so lots of Knox folk and, and friends and family have flowed through here already, uh, but we're glad that you've taken this time later in the evening today to come. Um, I was reminded to say that uh, during the service, we will not take up a collection. You know, since the pandemic, uh, that sort of stopped. Uh, but there are plates at, uh, if you feel that you really want to make a contribution to the ministry here at Knox and the mission here, there's plates at the doors, uh, both coming and going on both sides. Um, we wanted to keep it kind of the light sort of muted tonight, and uh, you've also been all given candles, tapers, and uh, when we get to the uh, final carol, which is Silent Night, we're going to have, uh, uh, we're going to all light each other's candles, turn down the lights, and hold them as we sing Silent Night, so that will be a, a beautiful way to uh, end the service and to go forth from here. So I'm going to invite Carrie Gordon to come and join me as we uh, go through the Christ Candle Litany, so I invite you to take that out of your bulletins, and... Uh, You'll see where it says all oh, that's when you read your part. Okay. The angels sing the glory of God in the highest heavens. Be not afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom God favors. At Christmas, God speaks in signs. The baby in the manger is a sign of a new life and new governance shining in the world. Christ is born and the world is filled with the promise of hope, signs of peace, joy, and the incarnation of God's love. Holy are you, source of all new life among us. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. We join with all creation in a joyful praise. We light this candle because God has been made flesh and dwells among us. We're going to begin by singing. Um, you, by the way, you also know that your the words to all the hymns are on this uh, bulletin insert tonight. So we're going to begin by singing, "Still, still, still." So I invite you to stand as we do that. <laughs> so chill the virgin's tender arms enfolding warm and safe the child are holding still 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 he sleeps this night so chill sleep 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 lies in slumber deep, while angel hosts from heaven come winging, sweetest songs of joy are singing, sleep, 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 he lies in slumber deep. 
Please be seated. Let's pray. Lord, our God, you have humbled yourself that we may be exalted. You became poor that we might become rich. You came to us that we may come to you. You became a human being like us, that we may be drawn into participation in your eternal life. All of this from your free, undeserved grace. All of this is your dear Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are gathered here in view of this mystery and wonder to pray to you, to praise you, to proclaim and hear your word. But we know that we cannot do these things under our own power. That it is you who free us to lift our hearts and our thoughts to you. So we ask you to come now into our midst. Surprise us. Show us and open to us the path to you through your Holy Spirit. So that we may see with our own eyes your light. The light that has come into the world. In order that our lives may indeed be witness to you. God of grace and truth, in Jesus Christ you came among us as light shining in the darkness. We confess that we have not welcomed the light or trusted good news to be good. We have closed our eyes to glory in our midst, expecting little and hoping for less. And so we take a moment to silently confess our wandering and our sin before you. Forgive our doubt, renew our hope, so that we may receive the fullness of your grace and live in the truth of Christ the Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our first reading tonight is from Isaiah 9, verses 2 to 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the days of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Uh, I, was, I forgot to mention a couple of things. One is that this is actually a joint service tonight we, uh, with the uh, folk from uh, Two Rivers Church as well, of which, which I'm the pastor. So it's good to be together, Knox folk and Two Rivers folk. And also, um, we're going to be sort of proceeding uh, unannounced each text. This is called a lessons and carol service. So, so we hear the, the lesson, which is the scripture, and then we sing a song that sort of responds to the scripture. And... Um, that's how it's going to go. So I'm going to invite you to stand. And, and um, you probably know this uh, carol. What's in Royal David City? But we're going to do this with kind of a call and response. So I'm going to go. What's in Royal David City? And then you go. What's in Royal David City? 
stood a lowly cattle shed, stood a lowly cattle shed, where a mother laid her baby, where a mother laid her baby, in a manger for a Mary was that mother mine, Jesus Christ, the little child. All right, here we go. He came down to earth from heaven. Who is God? reading from the Gospel of St. Luke, the second chapter, beginning at verse 1. And I'll be reading, as I think most of us are most familiar with, from the uh, King James Version. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed everyone into their own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. 
And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Thank you, Leah and Rachel and Alex. I invite the next scripture reader to come, reading Luke 2, 8 to 15. That's you. Right? <laughs> Our reading from Luke. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see the thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. I invite you to stand, angels from the realms of glory. Worship Christ the newborn 
Luke 2, chapter 16 to 20. So they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Yeah. 
seraphim from the air, but his mother only in her maiden bliss worshipped the What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. And if I were a wise man, I would do my and what I can, I give Him, give Him my Reading from Hebrews 1, verses 1 to 6. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you? Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. Uh, the angels said to the shepherds, do not be afraid. Can I tell you about a time when I was afraid? It actually happened really close to here. Um, it happened a few years ago, and it was about this time of year, but it was not like the kind of Christmas we've been having, but it was exceptionally cold. There was lots of snow on the ground. It was just bitter, frosty, and chill. And I was meeting a friend of mine for breakfast over at the Vienna. And so I lived down on Cardigan Street, and so I decided to cut through the Baker Street parking lot right over here. And uh, the sun was sort of just, the horizon was starting to lighten up a little. And, uh, and as I'm kind of hurrying across the parking lot, I see this guy coming towards me. And I'm... My spidey sense is immediately on alert because there's something not quite right about this guy. I mean, this is a cold mid morning, and he's got a, a thin windbreaker on, and he's got sunglasses on. I'm thinking, this doesn't seem right. And he's, like, beetling right for me. So he, he comes up to me, and he stands, like, about two inches from my face. And he says, do you have a cigarette? I said, no. I, I said, look, I'm sorry. I, I, don't, I don't smoke. I, I, I don't have a cigarette. My heart is just going like, gung, 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 gung. this is this kind of like short, thick set guy. He's not looking well. I'm thinking he's probably high. Something is going on. And he says, Do you have any money? I said, I'm oh, sorry, I don't carry any cash with me at all. Like, I, I'm, I'm on my way to breakfast, but I, don't, but I don't have any cash. 
At this point, I'm also thinking, I'm going like, okay, what happens if this guy like takes a swing at me or attacks me? I don't know what he's, he's going to do. And I'm, I'm a bit more like Michael Jackson in The Girl is Mine with Paul McCartney. You remember that? He's like, hey, Paul, I'm a lover, not a fighter. You know, and that's kind of my approach to life. And I'm thinking, I have no idea what I'm going to do. And then he grabs my wrists and he says, can you pray for me? And I go, now that I can do. And... <laughs> And so I, I can't even remember what I said, but I just said, oh, God. I had asked him his name. His name was Juan. I said, oh, God. I said, I, I don't know what Juan's needs are right now or problems, but I just pray that you would, you would talk to him and help him and, and do whatever you need to do to help him out. And, Amen. It wasn't very eloquent. It was so cold, and I think my heart was racing so fast, and... My body must have heated up, but I had this huge nasal drip, like just starting to come out the edge of my nose. He was shorter than I was, and he reached up, and he wiped the drip off my nose, and he said, you can go now. <laughs> I'd like to say that I stopped and said, hey, no, let's be buddies, and let me offer you a little pastoral counseling, you know, and something like that. I said, no, thanks very much, and I ran off to my breakfast appointment. I was scared. I was afraid. I didn't know what was going to happen. The line, do not be afraid, occurs 76 times in the Old and New Testaments. It's a theme in the Scripture. God is always speaking through angels and prophets to, to people on earth, to God's children, to everyone really. Do not be afraid. Now, I don't believe God intends us to understand that we can achieve some state that means you never have to fear anything again. My nephew was, and I were talking about this, this rock climber. Maybe some of you are climbers or boulders. His name's Alex Hunnell. There was a film about him climbing up the side of this crazy thing somewhere and they measured his his brain somehow they were doing this and the guy has no something wrong with his brain <laughs> he doesn't have any fear he can climb the sides of these walls and it doesn't affect him but that's that's not the rest of us is it we we find lots of things in life to be afraid of and I don't think God is saying when, when we hear these words, do not be afraid, saying, you're never going to have to fear again if you just trust in me. I don't think that's what God's saying. In fact, God has created us with fear so that we would be alert to danger that comes at us or, or comes at people that we love. But what I think God might be trying to communicate to us when God says, do not be afraid, is that when we are afraid, God has given us gifts to help us through the fear. Let me say that again. When we are afraid that God has given every one of us gifts to help us through that fear. To the shepherds, whose fears were no doubt more than just a group of shining able, uh, angels, although that must have been fairly frightening, um, they're also the underclass of the society with no real standing in the face of the religious and military and economic powers that were their context. They were the poor. And what was the gift given to them? That somehow in their poverty and in their humble state, they were free to be the first ones to receive this incredible news that in Bethlehem was born the Savior of the world. They were given this incredible gift. They were given a word, a word that surely they never forgot again, ever in their lives. Angels singing, proclaiming that they did not have to be afraid. Now, we don't all get miraculous gifts like that, but they, no doubt, didn't forget that. And later on in the story of Jesus, when the women come to the tomb expecting there to go and anoint Jesus' body, and they find that the stone is rolled away from the tomb, and there's an angel, and the angel says, do not be afraid, he's risen. And, they, and, they, and they, they're just like blown away, and they walk away, and then they see him. And they realize this is Jesus, and he has risen from the dead. And they, it says that they fall down, and, and that they, they worship at his feet. And he says, don't be afraid. He says, go and, tell, go and tell my friends that I'm alive. They were given this, this gift of himself. They could touch him and see him. For us, we 
We won't get that opportunity because that happened 2,000 years ago. But the Apostle Paul tells the Ephesians that, that there is this armor available, this protection, he says, that, that protects us when we face fearful enemies and conflicts, a breastplate of righteousness, a, a belt of truth, a sword of the Spirit, a helmet of salvation. God gives us gifts by which we can combat our fears. To deviate outside of Scripture for a second, I wonder if J.R. Tolkien had this in mind when the Fellowship of the Ring leaves Lothlorien and Galadriel gives each one of them a special gift for their quest that will be unique to their circumstance, that helps them in their journey. And these do come into play at the right time, for Frodo, the file of Galadriel, will shine in the darkest places. Do not be afraid. And for us who are 2,000 years away from the physical presence of Jesus and certainly not living in Middle Earth, we are also given gifts peculiar to our natures to help us when we are afraid. And I want you to think about that tonight. What do you think God has given you as a gift to hold on to when you are facing your fears? It might be a spouse or a partner or a friend who knows how to calm you when your heart is racing? It might be knowing how to light a fire without any matches. What's your superpower? It might be the gift of making people laugh when things seem very grim. It might be cleverness to see an alternative that no one else had thought of before in a dark situation. It might be the memory that things have worked out before and have been okay. It might be to know how to pray on a cold winter's morning. Of course, all these gifts have their source in this story that we have been retelling tonight. How many times have we heard this story? And in this story, we hear once again that God is with us, that God is the giver of faithful presence, the one who, according to the writer to the Hebrews, is superior to the angels, who has all things under control, even when we don't feel it, or even when we don't see it, even when we are afraid. Glory to God in the highest. Do not be afraid. Let's keep singing the story together. Go tell it on the mountain. I invite you to stand.
pray. Incarnate God, with the angels we sing and glorify your name, thankful for all that you have given us, for your presence in the world, for our nation, for our community, its leaders, for the places we live, for the witnesses of your church celebrating around the world this night. But today we are especially grateful for the gift of your Son, who gave up his heavenly home for a manger and then a cross so that we might know redemption, a gift that neither spoils nor fades. And with the angels, we also desire peace on earth, a peace that is broader and deeper even than the end of war, although we pray for the end of war. We pray for the restoration of this world, for the growth of your kingdom, for reconciliation, for healing, for renewal, for justice. We bring before you our prayers for the nations, especially for the folk and the people in Gaza, Israel, in Ukraine, Sudan, so many places where there is violence, where there's hatred, We pray for our nation and those in authority. We pray for their wisdom. We pray for good decisions. We pray for our community and those who govern it. May they also have wisdom. The church universal, its mission, all those who minister, the local congregations and their ministries. We pray for those of particular needs on this holy day, those who are alone, those who do not have family to celebrate with, those who do not have abundance, who might not know where their meal is coming from today or tonight. Pray for those who indeed are afraid, who are paralyzed by their fears. Make your incarnate presence known in every situation. And may we as your children and we as your servants be vessels of your peace. We pray these things in the name of the one who became flesh and dwelt among us, even Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
you, Megan. So I'm going to invite someone to come. You want to do it, Carrie? And start the first candle. And then you find the next person and you light the candle of the, per the person beside you until all of us until all of us have our candles lit. And uh, that'll sort of happen as we are singing Silent Night. And um, Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> I'll ask you to stand. faithful presence of Christ our Lord who is with us and who is for us and go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated.